So this is a uh, video on how to make a belt for a watchmaker's lathe. So typically um, you would use a belt or I've seen people make belts out of this nylon belt material you can buy on AliExpress from China. The problem with these belts is they're noisy. There's a little an edge here when you melt this belt together and it becomes very noisy and, um, and these things also snap. They're very hard to, to melt together. So, so I've discovered a different way of making belts. Now I've seen the leather belts being made before like this. This is an, actually an old leather belt where they had a metal clip in here holding the belt together and as the, as the belt turned around um, within the lathe it made a ticking sound as it turned and it was pretty annoying so it doesn't take much to annoy me so so the ticking sound was really annoying so I said okay how do I make a belt properly so so I thought well I could probably sew this together and I thought of using a thread to sew it together but now that's not going to work because over time that thread would break so fishing line that's the secret so so what you do to set it up properly you <clears throat> you take take the headstock off the lathe first thing you do is you weave the belt through this headstock so you've got to do that because if you don't you would have to take the whole headstock apart to put the belt on and that'd be uh, not very smart so so <clears throat> you take the headstock here and is it rotating with the pin in there and you put the belt weave the belt through the headstock stock then you trim the ends so they're flat. Now this one here is not flat, but I'm just going to show you an example of how, how this is done. So you trim the edges or the ends so this is flat and parallel, as they say in French. Parallel. So bacon parallel. So I can be funny. Ha ha. And anyway, you take this this tool here is is for uh, broaching hands, watch hands, to make the hole larger if you're if you're trying to increase the size of a of the minute or the hour hand or the minute hand on a watch. Um, but it's actually really good for holding these pieces of leather here. So, so what you do is you put the leather together and you leave just a bit out and a little bit more than the diameter of one of the pieces of leather. So I'm going to try to squeeze this together here. And then you take a rubber band because this little clip here does not work very well when you're doing this. So you take a rubber band and you put it around here. And uh, my wife is a busy videographer right now. Funny story. We already videotaped this whole thing. And then she get, she went, oh my God. All I did was take your picture. So not a lot of laughing in the background, okay? So <clears throat> so you do this. So you've got this clamped in there nicely. Then you got to get yourself a cheap vice from China. Like I, I buy a lot of stuff in AliExpress. Uh, Try to support the economy, but sometimes this stuff is so cheap you just got to do it. So, so all you do is you clamp this in at a little bit of an angle. You give yourself a bit of an angle like that. Clamp that in, like so. Now you've got the setup like this. Then you take your cutting brooch, and I've already done this before, as I told you, but I'm not sure whether the hole's still there. And what you do is you twist that brooch in the leather. Um, until it comes through the other side. It's the best way of making a hole in the leather. You see how that worked? And then you give it a good size hole. And where you start the hole, um, making the hole, is actually you should start the same diameter as the leather. So the leather is this thick, go down the same diameter in the leather. And that gives you enough leather to have strength um, when you're putting the needle through and you're sewing, right? So, so you do that, make a hole in this one. And then you make a hole in the other one, same thing. So this one here, I didn't trim it off on the bottom, but I'm just doing this in the video to show you how it's done. So I didn't measure it properly either, but that's fine. I didn't want this video to be three hours long. So I've got two holes now, like that. And then what you do, you grab your needle and you're, you put a good enough uh, amount of like length of fishing line in there so you can go through here around five or six times to give it some strength. So I'll just show you, you're just putting it through the hole that you've already made like that and pulling it through and then sewing it on this side and you keep in this one here and you keep going back and forth, back and forth until you get six of these, five or six of those. And once you're finished that, 
you just then it gives you what did you say? What strength of wine do you use? Oh yeah, you're right. Good good point, dear. You use I use this uh Berkeley, it's five pound test fishing line. So that's I believe it's five pound test. It says one point eight kilograms, but it's or four pound. This is four pound test. So you can use five or four or five pound test. Anyway, so it's fishing line that's used by really good fishermen that, that aren't worried about losing their fish. So five pound test, I usually use 10 when I fish. Anyway, you use five pound test line, you can make uh, five billion belts out of one reel of five pound test and pick a needle that's a, that's a good size for this, not, not a big giant needle. Um, anyway, once you have this in this configuration, then you take off the rubber band the rubber band. You remove the rubber band like this and then you take these off and they're again they'd be parallel like stuck to each other right. Now if you sew these really tight here like you make the loops and you sew it really tight you will not be able to open it like this. So the tip is that you sew it a little bit loose you make the loops around just a bit loose so that when you open it like that right the line the fishing line is the right um, strength like tightness right right the uh, length so don't sew it too tight and it's not too hard to do you get you'll practice doing that and and then once you've done this you open it up then you've got a belt for the lathe install it on the lathe and you're good to go so that's pretty much how you make a belt for a uh, watchmaker's lathe um, another thing that uh, some advice I want to give you here is that when you make a belt on this side here, let's just grab this for a second here, and you're measuring this belt for the lathe, and you put it through, this is a this is a lathe counter shaft that I bought and reconditioned. I actually have quite a few of those. And you're making the belt like this, and you're measuring where to cut here. The You'll measure the right distance here to, to cut this, but once you put the head on the lathe, so if I put this head on like this, like that, and I've got another belt going through here, and if I'm not absolutely perfect with its length and the tightness of that belt, there's really no way of adjusting it, because I'll take this counter shaft and be able to tilt it this way, which will t tighten the belt on this side, but it will loosen the belt on this side. So my recommendation with this particular setup, um, I <clears throat> screwed this into a hole here, the motor into a hole here that doesn't allow me to move it back and forth. So you want to be able to move the mo motor back and forth by about probably about half an inch to allow you to tighten that belt once you've set it up. So in this case this, this is a Burrell stand that's got little slots here. So I could have screwed this motor into one of these slots and then I'd be able to loosen the motor up and then slide it back a bit that would allow me to tighten this belt because if it's fixed like this you're kind of screwed you can't you can't tighten this without loosening this so anyway that's the technique for uh, for making the belt um, I do highly recommend you make the leather belts um, the leather I typically use is this leather which is actually easier to work with it's square like that on the end and then you put it on and you, you're able to straighten it up like that because it's uh, nicely squared off and I buy this um, leather at Markswork Warehouse. It's boot, it's actually a thick boot leather. So it's made for shoelaces. Um, and you can buy a lot of it for almost no money at all. And I've made all of my belts with this leather to date. And they're thin enough to be able to ride through the gear like so. And over down here on the, um, on the headstock, they ride very nicely on the headstock like that without being too big and without jamming down below here on the headstock. So anyway, that's how you make a, uh, <clears throat> a belt for a watchmaker's lace. So thanks a lot for watching this. Uh, you guys all look fuzzy because I've got times three glasses on. And if I put this on here, you look even fuzzier. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.